One year ago I had one strange accident in Train Sim World 2. I decided to have some switching on class 8 British Railways and when I attached my carriage they didn't want to move with my engine. What is it? Bug? No. I also thought that it's bug. But in fact uh, they had just different braking systems. Because on my engine there was air brake, but the carriage didn't have air brake. They had only vacuum brake. So what's the difference between air brake and vacuum brake? And when we should use air brake and when we should use vacuum brake? Let's see. In the early days of railways, trains were short and lightweight, so it was enough to slow or stop them by applying locomotive and brake one brakes only. But over time, the trains became heavier, the speed increased and the braking force became not enough. The first solution was to couple additional brake vans in the middle of the train and the brakes of each van were manually applied by the railway workers in response to signal of the driver. Of course, this system had a lot of problems. The brakemen, so the members of the train crew who applied the brakes on the brake vans were called, could miss the driver's signal for a variety of reasons. In long and heavy trains there were more brake cars than the brakemen, and the brakes were applied sequentially rather than all at once. The braking force of each car was relying on the strength of a particular crew member's arm. A major advance was adoption of a vacuum braking system in which flexible pipes were connected between all the vehicles of the train, and brakes on each vehicle could be controlled from the locomotive. But why was it decided to use vacuum rather than compressed air, as on modern trains? The answer is that in 19th century, instead of equipping steam locomotives with a compressor, it was much easier to use an ejector, a device that created vacuum without moving parts, using only a powerful jet of steam. The simple vacuum system had a major defect that in the event of one of the hoses connecting the vehicles becoming displaced, the vacuum brake on the entire train was useless. In response to this obvious defect, the automatic vacuum brake was subsequently developed. It was designed to apply fully if the train became divided or if a hose became displaced. Since then, British locomotives and rolling stock have been equipped with vacuum brakes until the 1980s. Since 1950, the railways of Britain began to use the air brakes using compressed air instead of vacuum. The fact is that air brakes can be made with more effective than vacuum brakes for a given size of brake cylinder. An air brake compressor is usually capable of generating a pressure of 90 pounds per square inch or 620 kilopascals versus only 15 pounds per square inch or 100 kilopascals for vacuum. And on the diesel locomotives that had spread by the time, it was already easier to use a compressor than a steam ejector. But a huge number of cars were already equipped with the vacuum brakes, and it would be too difficult and costly to change brakes on every wagon throughout whole Great Britain. It was much easier and cheaper to equip new locomotives and rolling stock with both brake systems, and such diesel locomotives and wagons we can meet on British roads in train sim world. So in the cabs of class 8, class 31, class 33, class 37.5, class 40, Class 45-1 and Class 47 locomotives, there are brake selector switches that have air and vacuum mode. Also on some of them, each mode is divided into passenger and goods, and some locos have a light engine mode. With the light engine mode everything is clear, it is used only when moving without cars. With the use of goods and passenger modes everything is also clear. The thing is that for freight trains the brakes apply and release a little slower, which minimizes snatching, where trailing vehicles violently move back and forth in response to the brake catching, and therefore excessive strain on the vehicle couplings. But how to understand when you should choose air mode and when vacuum? In fact, everything is simple here too. It all depends on the cars. Since air brakes are more effective than vacuum brakes, it is common to use the first one with cars equipped with both systems. Thus, the vacuum brake is only used with wagons without air brakes. How to distinguish these cars from the rest? The most simple way is to look at special plate on railcar. 
Each rail car has a special plate where is written what braking system it has. But if you cannot find this plate, you can just look at the hoses. In the vacuum brace, the hose has a larger diameter and is closed by the plug sucked into hose, while with the air brake, the hose has a smaller diameter and has a special tap to close it. So, if you see a larger hose without a tap, these are vacuum brakes, and if you see a smaller hose with a tap, these are air brakes. If you see both hoses, it means that the carriage is equipped with both braking systems. To make it easier for you, we have sorted all British railway cars presented in Trainsim World for the moment of movie creation. The table is on your screen now. As you can see, in the Liverpool Crew DLC, we even have one railcar that even doesn't have any braking system. So for the train with this railcar, you will need a braking van, as we told at the beginning of the video. If you have in your train dual braking cars and don't have vacuum brakes, then, according to British Railway standards, you should use air brake. The choice of the braking mode is especially important when coupling and uncoupling with wagons and locomotives. If the vacuum brake mode is set on your locomotive when hitching, then, at the moment of coupling, the game will connect only the vacuum brake hoses. So, if the coupled cars are equipped with both types of brakes, then, when they are parked, the air brake is applied, since it is accepted to be used if there is a choice, and you can't release them. Because even if you change the braking mode after hitching, the hoses will remain disconnected. And you release the brakes only on the locomotive, but the cars will remain braked. Also exactly the same situation will be when you attach the carriage brake by the vacuum brake using air brake mode on your locomotive. Moreover, don't forget that when you are pulling cars equipped with only a vacuum brake, but use the air brake mode, then the brakes would work only on the locomotive, and as a result, you would have extremely limited braking power. Therefore, next time be attentive when selecting braking mode before starting your journey. So, when we see in movie uh, that a rail worker repairs a brake pipe with uh, usual scotch tape, it's true, just the train has uh, vacuum brakes.